everybody, I'm John Swantek. Welcome to the latest installment of Match Play on PGATour.com. Here's the way it works. Three topics to be debated by two participants from our expert panel. I will determine one champion. Let's meet the gentleman who will be going head-to-head -head this week. John McGinnis, lead analyst from the PGA Tour Network on Sirius XM Radio, and Len Shapiro, the longtime columnist from the Washington Post and current contributor to the Global Golf Post. Mark Wilson wins the Sony Open in Hawaii, gentlemen, but another close call for Steve Marino, and it prompts our first topic, which goes to John McGinnis. John, who's the best player on tour right now without a victory? Well, it's an interesting question because, you know, we have Jeff Overton and Ricky Fowler who played on the Ryder Cup team a year ago who both can fall into that category. Uh, but if you're actually paying attention, it's the simple answer is a guy who's actually considered a rookie on the PGA Tour this year. He's a former Order of Merit champion on the European Tour, an 11-time winner. He finished in the top 10 in three of the four majors in 2008. And nobody is thinking about what kind of a year it could be for Robert Carlson. Robert Carlson is easily the best player uh, that's now a member of the PGA Tour that has not won on the PGA Tour. He's won all around the world, uh, Robert Carlson. Is he the best without a PGA Tour victory? No fair, John. Come on. <laughs> yes, uh, obviously. I mean, his, his record speaks for itself. Taking away guys who are obviously veteran, veteran, veteran players, I would go with uh, with Jeff Overton and Ricky Fowler. I saw Overton uh, at Greenbrier last year. Uh, Should have won that tournament. Uh, Ricky Fowler, r Rookie of the Year last year, top 30 in the money list, uh, had seven top 10s, 25 for 36 in cuts made and won $2.8 million. Uh, for a kid coming out right out of college, uh, I thought that was pretty impressive. Good points made by Len, but uh, John McGinnis gets us on a technicality because Robert Carlson is <laughs> not one on the PGA Tour, so uh, topic number one does go to John McGinnis. Okay, the legacy of the late, great Bob Hope continues this week, guys, uh, with the tournament that bears his name, the Bob Hope Classic. Topic number two goes to Len Shapiro. Len, which entertainer has done the most through the years to promote the game of golf? There's no question in my mind. I, th I think it's Bob Hope. Uh, you know, everywhere he went, he had a golf club in his hand on all those USO tours. You know, he's the only uh, entertainer I know who's had his own exhibit at the World Golf Hall of Fame in St. Augustine. Uh, he was golf. Uh, he played it. He loved it. He made jokes about it. And uh, he he, he's the guy. Uh, McGinnis, how about a nod to some of the current celebrities like Bill Murray, Justin Timberlake in recent years? Bill Murray carried the flag um, when there just weren't a tremendous amount of A-list celebrities playing golf. And part of the reason for that is, is our A-list celebrities keep getting younger and younger and younger. I can see at this point, uh, Bob Hope has easily done more than anybody else. Uh, but Justin Timberlake's been famous since he was 12 years old. Uh, but he didn't come into the game for another nearly 15, 18 years. History may show that Justin Timberlake you know, was the next one on the list. It all started with Bob Hope. Golf was certainly the common thread in Bob Hope's life. I think uh, Len Shapiro takes topic number two. Final topic goes to uh, John McGinnis. Again, there's a connection to the Bob Hope Classic where David Duvall shot that final round 59 back in 1999, John. Of the five 59s in tour history, including two last year, which to you is the most impressive? I, I think the ball is because he shot 13 under. Uh, remember, he, he did it at the Palmer Private, which was par 72. He was the first to do it in the final round to win the golf tournament. And if you look at what it did for him for the rest of that year, he went from winning the Bob Hope to also winning the British Open and becoming the number one player in the world. Um, so I would go with David Duvall's. Uh, there is kind of a downside to uh, David Duvall's that very few people realize, and that is he only beat me by five that day. So <laughs> it, it means that he, perhaps he didn't play as well that day as, uh, as he could have. Uh, Len, uh, Stuart Appleby's 59 was also in the final round, but it came on a par 70 last year. You know, e even he sort of discounted the 59. I, you know, he, he said it just sort of felt like a, a, a routine round. I mean, a routine great under par round, but uh, he, he wasn't all that impressed with it himself. You know, Al Guyberger, though, when you think about it, uh, Al Guyberger was the first to do it and, and, of course, has ever since been known as Mr. 59. So he was the first to, you know, sort of the, the Roger Bannister of, of professional golf. Uh, so I'd give him a nod. 
Just because no one saw it doesn't mean Al Geiberger's 59 wasn't sensational. I think the fact that he accomplished that round with equipment that's now considered prehistoric was simply astounding. Since uh, Len Shapiro mentioned Al Geiberger, we're going to give him a slight nod on topic number three and a two-to-one victory over John McGinnis in this week's installment of Match Play. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Well played. Thanks, thank John. You. I feel like the Jets against the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Upset.